Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I hope you guys are all well. I hope you guys are enjoying yourself and uh, enjoying these videos. I wish, I wish, I wish I could make these videos better for you guys. Let me know in the comments if you think these uh, videos are a bit too advanced for you. Because I want to get an idea of um, you know, what kind of audience is benefiting from this video. So if you think you're benefiting from these videos, let me know. If you think that it's a bit too fast or too advanced, then please also let me know. So I can maybe design uh, another series which is at a more basic level. Right, so the aim of this course is to get students uh, customized, acclimatized to how the language of the Quran works. Right, the, that, that's basically the aim of it. And because Balagha is usually studied from terminology, and terminology sometimes what happens is it kind of um, it overwhelms the students so much that when they start to look into the Quran, they find it difficult to try and see all the terminology being applied. You know, so you know that's something which I want to overcome with this method, inshallah. So let's start this lesson then. So this is lesson number three. So first of all, here we have a question being asked here. So this is the question. So ah, alam najal, alam najal. Remember, now we go back in our, in your mind. Remember, the whole of the surah is linked together. That's what we have to keep in mind. This entire surah is called a chapter because it all is interrelated. So. Alam a su'al, a question is being raised. What was said before? Remember, they were asking each other, Yatasa alun. Yeah. So they were asking each other. Now the question is being or a question is being asked. It kind of fits in as well. They're asking questions. Now Allah is asking you guys questions now. So yes or no question. This is uh. So it's used for uh. Alam naj'al al arda mihadan. Yes or no? Tell me yes or no. Didn't we make the earth a mihad? Yes or no? So you say, yes Allah, you did. Okay, so it's one of those kind of affirmation or negating questions. Next, so we have over here another word, naj'al. Now see, here we have for the first time, na is being used. So in uh, balagha, what happens is, in, or in, in language, when you want to kind of change the camera position, like in a movie, you want to change the camera position from one, from, from like, let's say ground level to bird's eye view or you know from one person to another person what you do is use a different camera so in, in language a device that's used which they call iltifat and I'll, I'll write some of the devices down later on so they kind of change so all of a sudden Allah was talking about they 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 third person third person third person now all of a sudden Allah says we so like the camera position has changed yeah naj'al so here the change has taken place now in other words a change from them to we and we is used uh, if you guys don't know this so we in Arabic is used for authority not to say that Allah is like a, a plural or is many but it's we as in uh, authority like the highest level speaking we we have done this so when you have a high authority speaking that kind of sound comes out and this is what I I kind of think in my mind you know like a, a very high noble uh, like a, a judge or uh, you know some leader of a country speaking right so ij'al now see here this word ja'ala Allah could have said alam nakhluq yeah alam nakhluq khalaqa alam nakhluq I mean, it could have said that and it actually flows as well but this is more to do with the precision of the wording in other words why does ja'ala fit in here and not nakhluq fit in here that's something which is obviously a question that would remain on your mind al ard so the ard is basically in Arabic means the the earth or the ground that you live on. Yeah. So here again, the earth is something which is massive, right? It's great, it's big. So now you want to think, right, in the beginning of the surah, would it be appropriate to use in this surah the earth? Now, was there something great being mentioned earlier on? Yes, there was. Yeah, there was questions being asked about something great. Naba was used. So it befits to use a word ard. You know, subhanallah. When you think about these things, you start to realize, oh, look how much like thought goes into. Now, obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond thought and all this, but it's something for us to think about. So there's greatness in there. So it fits in. Greatness fits in with naba. Yeah. Do you guys understand that? So the greatness, the ard being massive, it fits in with the earlier because if the earlier one had said something like khabar 
so you know used a word which was lighter and not that great then ard wouldn't really fit in right so mihadan okay next word now the word mihad here uh, those who know arabic grammar would know mihad can either be it's from the root letters mahada right and it can either be the masdar so mihad can either be masdar yeah which is the root word of mahada yam yamhadu right so it's the masdar in other words uh, we've we've done this alam naja alil arda how we have we not made the earth mihad have we not stretched it have we not spread it yeah have we not stretched spread or made it soft so that okay the mustard can be implied or you can actually have mamhud so mustard can have the meaning of ism uh, maf'ul in other words have we not made the earth something that's been spread out like have we not made the earth something that has been stretched have we not yes we have ya allah you have so it has two possible meanings there so therefore by using a mustard in the quran is a very uh, it's well known in the quran this is a feature that the quran will use certain words which can have multifunctions right multifunctions and it can be translated because of that one word the sentence can be translated in multiple ways right which is a, a sign of the balagha of the quran yeah subhanallah if you didn't know this this is you know subhanallah something amazing how one word in the quran is specifically used because it can play so many important or it can, it can relay so many important translations okay so and mihad now so now we want to contrast words so this is another thing that you get in balagha in language where you want to bring the right words that contrast like for example like if i say something like breakfast i say coffee and cereal so coffee fits in with cereal does that make sense coffee and cereal are two things which kind of fit together so, so th those are kind of words that kind of match matching words baby and soft um you know tree and tall this, this, you get what i'm saying so you know this is also something which is found in the quran you can't see in translations a lot because sometimes you lose that in the translation so soft and the earth is hard so in your mind you imagine that when you when i say earth you imagine something a bit tough the ground some parts of the earth are very soft but generally it's considered to be something hard because you can walk on it mihad is more soft mihad is actually something which is like a uh, you know a cradle as well which is soft for baby to lay on so you have this softness in your mind and you have the hardness as well like two opposites that are used okay let's move on then um right what else how else can we contrast this there's also other forms of contrasting as well that's 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 being used over here as well so you have for instance like the word ard right which is nature natural and you have mihad which is more of a human thing you get what i'm saying so like ardan is a natural thing allah has created mihadan would be more of like a, a, a human sort of like a, a, you know creation nurturing humans make things soft humans kind of make a baby's bed so you have this this kind of con contrast of two two opposite things okay so uh, right let's see some more then so next word we're going to look at mihad now now we, we want to look at something else now in the language that's used in other words uh, like similitudes okay or similes or comparisons this is also another device used in languages to create powerful imagery like if you know something in your mind that, that's very well known to you and then you want to talk about something which is quite abstract people don't really know about you kind of draw examples with it like let's say for example there's someone who wants to explain about how the brain works and it's very difficult for them to explain it might be easier for a person to explain how a car works right so if you explain to someone how a car works and then you draw, use that as an ana analogy of how a brain works it kind of you know makes it more easier to be able to understand so this is fine found abundantly in the quran so mihad for instance here they the, the mufassirin mentioned that it's like it's like allah saying like alam naja alil arda mihadan so remember we said over there have we not made the earth a mihad so some have even said that the mihad can refer to similitude in other words haven't we made the earth like a cradle like something very soft like so you all know cradles and you'd never imagine to compare the earth to a cradle unless you're kind of looking at it from a bird's eye view subhanallah 
Yeah, so you're looking at from bird's eye view, and then you kind of see how it, it acts as a cradle. Yeah, so um, you know that's another interesting thing. You know, you you might want to think about as well. So okay, right. Uh, let's look at another. Okay, now. Um, so here, there's an issue of several things that come to my mind. For example, like alam naja al arda mihadan. So this is like kindness from Allah, a favor from Allah, might, the strength of Allah comes to mind as well. Um, you know, uh, Allah's knowledge as well, because if Allah has made the earth like this, that just shows the sheer knowledge that Allah has. Yet yeah, to know like how the earth is made, what it's made up of, the atoms and you know, at the cellular level of everything, of insects and creatures, of how they live in there and how they abode and the, how they walk on there, it's something which is mind-boggling. Yeah, so all of these things kind of come to mind. Alam naja'al arda mihadan. So Allah is asking this question now. So you go back to uh, the beginning of the surah. Amma yatasa'alun. What are these people asking each other about? Anin naba'il azim. Of that great thing, great information, news. Alladhi hum fi mukhtalifun. In which they are differing with each other, etc, etc. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, have we not made the earth we had? Now you see, why is I want I want you guys right now. I want you guys to think right. Pause it over here, maybe write it down. I want you guys to think about this question. Why is Allah bringing us back to the earth and these things? The question is obviously something which they're asking, which is most likely to do with the day of judgment, or as the prophets are some being a true prophet, or the Quran being from God, etc. Or Allah. Uh, why Allah mentions that? I mean, what's the earth got to do with this? I want you to think about that and answer in the comments. Okay, next. Jibal. So, Jibal, now notice earth over there was singular, whereas Jibal over here is plural. So, using instead of saying, well, Jabala, Allah used the word plural, plural Jibal. And it actually it flows as well. Da, 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 da. It kind of flows as well, and if if it had said alam naja al ardam yada wal jabala autadan, yeah, it wouldn't kind of had that flow to it as well. So again, mountains are mentioned because usually when you get a mountain, you get like a mountain range, yeah, the jibal. So the mountains found in in areas around the world, you'll find them in ranges, you get in large uh, groups of mountains. So the Arabs knew mountains very well. You know, like in Mecca, Medina, Mecca was like surrounded by mountains. In Medina, you have the Jabal Uhud and others. So, Wal Jibala, again, the greatness, because this surah is about mentioning things which are great. Then Jibala, okay, so the greatness, just like the earth was mentioned early on, the greatness. So, imagine there's a guy, now he is, you know, outside. The first thing that he's going to look at is what? The earth. And then he's going to look at the mountain. Right, so it's like is it, there's a kind of sequence there. If you notice, you know what I'm saying. There's a sequence there. It's like look at the earth. Didn't Allah? Didn't I make this? Did I make this into something soft and, and nice and to be able to walk upon? Well, Jibal, look at the mountain. Look, didn't I make this upright? Yeah, Jibal outadan into pegs. Yeah, so it's like over here you get this element of hardness as well. Yeah. So with the mihad, the earth is like sandwiched now. Earth is mentioned, mihad is mentioned, and then jibal is mentioned. Ajib, eh? it's like sandwiching in. So in your mind, you're getting all these emotions and all these kind of imagery. It's been created. Okay, so you get this highness. So you see another contrast. So the ard, the mihad, right? The ard being the mihad, being low, cradle being low, jibal now being high up. So contrast of of and above okay so that's also imagery so it's being low the mountain being high up again there's contrasting there taking place and it's, it's very very powerful imagery that's being used here okay next Otad then so Otad now is okay um, we had Mahad over there which was uh, you know uh, the plural of Otad is Watad Mahad over there Mihadan Mihad was more of a singular, there wasn't a plural. So Ard, it fits in with earth, single, and Jibal and Autad. Instead of saying, well, Jibal, Awtad, and Awtad, and each one of them are like pegs, Awtad. Yeah, and Watad is, creates, subhanallah, this is also imagery as well. 
you know, very, very powerful imagery is being created here, just like the Mihad over there, you know, the Watad. Okay, so, okay, we'll come back to that imagery in a bit. So, associated to uh, humans, Watad is, yeah, just like Mihad was, a structure comes into your mind, just like Mihad, a baby comes to mind, care, caressing, taking care of, being gentle with, whereas Otadan is like more a human sort of construct as well, but it's more powerful as well, more mighty, more like sophisticated, you can say. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of another word, if it comes to my mind, put it in the comments if you think of that word. So imagine this guy here, this guy basically wants to set up a tent. So when you want to set up a tent, to hold that tent, what do you do? You put these pegs, can you see these pegs I'm drawing? These pegs, right, these are called watads in Arabic, okay? So the function of the watad is a very structural uh, function it has, is to keep the building together. The watad has to be very firmly in for the structure to be solid. So in other words, jibal, the, 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 the strength, the might, the power of the mountain and the power of pegs. So in other words, the stronger the peg, the mightier the person who put it in. Yeah, you get me? So if you've got like a small peg and you put it in the ground, but compared to a large massive peg that's been put into the ground, you know, you can see the difference between the two. Against you get this kind of powerful imagery, okay, of pegs and, you know, people putting it in. So, but the question is, why is Allah calling the mountains pegs? Like, pegs are normally associated to keeping a, a, a structure upright, like a tent, from, from it blowing away. So why pegs? So Allah hasn't mentioned here why the mountains are pegs, but you would assume in your mind you create this image of if the mountains are pegs, it seems as though the thing that they are driven into the earth, it's like it's keeping the earth from blowing away or moving too much. Yeah, that's the kind of imagery that that it creates in your mind. Okay, so you got this pegs. Okay, so we've got this pegs imagery, jibal, autadan. Again, autadan, like mihad, is a similitude, yeah, a comparison analogy that's being drawn here. Haven't we made the earth like a mihad? Haven't we made the mountains like pegs? Like pegs. So they are not pegs, in that pegs would be like what humans would put. But this is at a grand scale. So haven't we made it like this? So in your mind, this comes in your mind again. It's creating imagery. Yeah. And what we call, you know, isti'ara. Okay. Or tashbih rather. Imagery is being created over here. So there's lots of imagery. So this is in Balagha, you actually call this tashbih. All right. You draw similarities. Like you say, Zayd is like a lion. So then Zayd being like a lion, you know what a lion's like. The emotions that are created inside the heart and the mind. When I mention lion, and then I say Zaid with it, it kind of it gives Zaid this braveness and strength. Okay, by imagery. So this powerful imagery that the Quran creates. Okay, so Jibal is a plural times three, and Otad is plural. So if it's like we said earlier on, you know, the uh, you know, munasaba appropriateness of plural for plural, and earth is singular, and whereas mihad is also singular. Okay, right now I want to make a Point out. Now, there's some more other things I can really kind of go into here, but I don't really want to go too much because I don't want to make it too long. That's the thing with these videos. I want to inspire people into kind of appreciating the depth of the Quran. Yeah, and maybe you guys will watch this and you guys will say to me, you know what? I want to join. I want to study this these, these science and I want to become an expert in this and I want to go into the depths. And, you know, may Allah make you like that. You know, may Allah accept your, your good intentions as well. Wallahi, this was something which when I was studying, I would love learning about these small little things, right? And I would learn, and that would kind of inspire me to learn more. So, right, let's just number them. So first, okay, the first device of Balagha used here is question. Questions are being used here. Very powerful. You know, it's a way of waking people up. It's a way of stirring emotions inside of people as well. Questions, questions. Okay, number two is the change from they to we, what we call the iltifat. That's also very changing camera position. Very powerful. Okay, Num uh, so we have authority here. Number three is authority being used. So authority, it kind of automatically people recognize authority. So recognition of authority that Allah is speaking at an authoritarian level. And this is only Allah can do this. Speaking at such a level that no human can say, have I made the earth like this? Yeah, they'd be lying. But Allah, 
he is actually saying exactly what he's done. Yeah, and that, that to me that's just like very powerful speech that is. Yeah, very powerful. Okay, so Najal Ardumihad. Number four, Nakhluk. Yeah, so instead of using Najah Nakhluk, use Najal because here Allah does not want to talk about Allah doesn't we know Allah's created the earth, right? Yeah. Many other places in the Quran Allah has said this time and time again. Uh, he created the earth and the skies. Right? He doesn't want to point that out over here. What he wants to show is these stages after creation, changing the earth into a mihad. Like Allah has created Mars and Jupiter and other planets, but the land there is not like Earth's. Yeah? So earth has been made after that into a mihad. That's interesting things, those are. Yeah, it's like Allah wants to kind of. We weren't there when the earth was being made. When it was created, we weren't there, nor when it was being made to what it is now. We weren't there. And it's still kind of going through changes slowly in different places of the earth. So, didn't we make the earth a mihad for people? Okay. Right, next, number f uh, four. Number five is supposed to be. Okay. Uh, okay, number five, five uh, just a little over here. You guys will understand that. So, number four is supposed to be the earth. Right, so the earth has been made. Again, the earth is the greatness so because amma yatasa'alun an in naba al azim all those kind of great words create kind of curiosity inside of someone the earth has been mentioned because it befits number five okay uh, like we said the mihad can mean the mustar and it can also mean mamhud right so those are the two kind of things that the, the way one word in, in in a verse can create several implications or several different translations and all are valid Okay, next one, number six, is a like comparison that's being used here. Yeah, like a mihad. Okay, number seven is uh, referencing or comparing two things together. So using two words which are contrasting rather. So like earth, ard, and mihad. Yeah, the word ard, mihad, ard, mihad. And that, that's something I didn't mention as well. But even the pronunciation, there's difference there so you have the softness of the mihad the cradle and then you have the hardness of the earth you know coming to mind number eight is the nature in other words ard is natural mihad is more human intervention okay number nine right number nine is jibal mountains okay so this is um using the mountains as well going from you know from one to another level the earth below you looking down and then you're looking up upwards Okay, so this is also a device. Jibal being mentioned, the power, the might of the mountains, right? Because it befits this kind of theme of the surah. Uh, okay, then you have uh, imagery, the the outad and you know the pegs that you think of, and the imagery, the tent, and all of that that comes to your mind. Okay, and then the, like the question that comes to your mind: Why has he made it like this? Right, we understand the earth made a cradle, but again, but why the mountains are they made pegs? Okay, unless the earth is moving, unless there's, you know, it's a function. So, okay, so another issue here, number 13, is something which is, um, you know, the, the, the associated to humans, the mihad is associated to humans, and the autad. Number 14 is the comparison again, over here, where you have the earth, which is low, and the mountains, which are high. Yeah, another point over here, we have wow yeah which is for what we call the the wasal in balagha yeah joining things together yeah so sequencing things like you might want to say something but you might want to add on extra things i might want to say i read a book and uh sat on the bed and uh to biscuit right so you have these and so they play a function in balagha as well yeah, by mentioning a sequence of things. So Allah could have repeated over here. He could have said, Alam naja'al al-arda mihadan and Alam naja'al al-jibala awtadan. He could have repeated, but he didn't. He continued it. Yeah, continuation over here. Because Allah over here, it doesn't befit, it doesn't make sense to repeat the question again. So the, the whole question is like asking several things in that question. One question, but several things. I want to ask you two things. Did I not make the earth a mihad and the mountains a peg did I, did I not do that instead of saying I want to ask you two questions did I not make the earth a mihad did I not make this did I not do this did I? so Allah is mentioning two things over here 
So this is also wasal in balagha. Number 16 is the feelings that you get from this surah. When you're being told by Allah, did I not do this for you? Imagine like, you know, you've disobeyed your parents and you come home late and your parents tell you off and say, have I not been giving you the right education? Have I not been providing for you? Have I not given you what you wanted? Have I not been doing this? So you feel so humiliated and humbled and so upset and remorseful about what you did. So again, this, Alam naja'al al-arda mihada. Ya Allah, you are so kind. Alam naja'al al-arda mihada. Look how, look how favor, Allah's favors are upon us. Look at his strength, might. Look at his knowledge. Yeah. Intricate knowledge of the universe. Okay. Right, so another one. Okay, these verses, they actually end in a particular rhyme. Yeah, have you noticed? Like, for example, there's a rhythm there. أَلَمْ نَجَعَلِ الْأَرْضَ مِهَادًا وَالْجِبَالَ أَوْتَادًا There's a rhythm there, isn't it? So just as there is a flow in the words, right, which we call fasaha, yeah, the words actually flow. They, if someone listens to them, it feels good. Like if I say to you, um, I... Uh, you know, uh, you know, this is just like a, a random question. I instead of saying I tore the paper, I say I broke the paper. It doesn't sound right. I broke the paper. So this is also something which is important. Flowing sentences. Okay, so over here at the end of the verse as well, you have these what they call fawasils. Endings are also so in the Quran you find this quite frequently. Like they'll end in غير المغضوب عليهم الضالين عالمين um, they kind of end in a certain way, right? يعلمون, تعلمون, تذكرون. So these are also very important in creating like these sounds, yeah, because the melodious sound is an important thing in conveying messages as well. It has a very powerful effect, and the Quran is is a very good example for that. Okay, now, so we have over here, uh, you know, uh, question. So for example, like. Actually, I think I'll uh, write this down in a list. Yeah, let me just zoom. Yeah, right. So what balagha uh, terms did we use today? So one is taqdeer. Taqdeer is a question which is rhetorical question. Yeah, a rhetorical question. Like I ask you a question, but there is no specific answer. It's just, you know, I want you to think about this. Did you not uh, hear what I said to you? So I don't want you to say to me, yes, I did hear. It's like trying to get something across to you guys. It's more for like creating questions in the mind. Are you guys understanding this? Or are you guys thinking this guy's going on and on and on and on? <sighs> right, it's going to finish, don't worry, inshallah. Number two. Okay. I mean, I love this kind of stuff, guys. I don't know how much you guys love this kind of stuff. I mean, Allah, you know, I'm trying to pour that love that's in my heart for, for the Quran into your guys' hearts. Right. Uh, may Allah increase that love in our hearts. Okay, number two is... In Arabic, you have iltifat balagha, which is changing camera scenes, right? Changing from them to we Allah. Number three, another device that's been used over here is something which is known as i'tilaf. I'tilaf means that the wordings are appropriate with each other. The meanings ard, mihad, jibal, autad, yeah, single, single, plural, plural, hard, soft, all that. Number four is. Um, the muqabala the muqabala so two things mentioned here two things mentioned there alam naj'al arda mihadan jibala awtadan dan da dan dan so it's like two things being mentioned and it fits like instead of saying three things and then two things through two 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 okay number 5 um is tash comparison when you are like mentioning a an analogy or a similitude Okay, just like we had over there, mihada, like a mihad, earth like a bedding, haven't we made the mountains like pegs? Okay, number six, and by the way, this is called tashbih, it's not, so the, you guys who studied isti'ara, this isn't isti'ara because mushabbah and mushabbah bi are both mentioned here. And in isti'ara, the rule is that the one of the two, mushabbah, mushabbah bi has to be omitted. This is actually known as tashbih balir. Okay, very the most powerful tashbih that you can have. Okay, next, uh, istidraj, like going from one to another, step by step, starting off from the earth, then going to the mountains, then it's going to go to something else. Yeah, so this is called istidraj, another balagha term for you guys. Uh, uh, 
Number seven is Taswir. Taswir is imagery that's being created here. Okay, I keep on saying it is imagery, powerful imagery that's creating the minds. Okay, number eight. Uh, again, imagery is an extremely important thing, by the way. Yeah, because image is a thing that creates emotions. So imagery is really important. So number eight is have removal. So something's been removed over here. Like, for example, the calf has been removed. Kami had the ka like has been removed. And also the alam naj'al has been removed second time. So you don't have it twice. Okay, and number nine is saja. So saja, uh, they don't like saja. They call it fawasil, the ending of the verses, the sound that's created at the end of each verse, which is replicated. Okay, so uh, these are, you know, some of the uh, examples, uh, balagha examples that you have. So taqdeer is there, goes to the question. Iltifat is there. Lam naj'al. I'tilaf is the wording which befits, fits with each other. Muqabala is like you mentioned two things here. One, two, one, two there. Okay, and number tashbih is like resembling it to a bedding or cradle or outad, pegs. Istidraj is like you start from the earth and then you move up to the mountains. Taswir, the imagery that's created like pegs and mihad. Uh, hadaf is where you have alam naj'al missing, removed from wal before wal jibal. And saja is like the ending of it. Okay, so <sighs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Almost finished, almost finished, guys. Yeah, let me know guys, if you think these videos are too long, I should make them shorter. Please let me know so in future I can make shorter videos. Um, but there's so much that I can go into without exaggeration. There's so much that I, I don't want to kind of overwhelm you guys with all the information. At the same time, uh, I don't want to give you uh, just too less so you can't see the, the, the beauty of it. Okay, Right, so now I want to mention to you, like why doesn't Allah use the word ma here? He could have said, uh, uh, Ma ma. So ma doesn't play the same function here because ma is used for refuting something, refutation. So like if someone says, no, Allah didn't make this, then you would say, ma right? So it was used for negating and refutation, whereas lam is not. Nakhluq, and that's the thing in Balagha as well, is you don't want to mention too much more than, than, than what is needed. Okay. Uh, so alam nakhluq alam ama ja'alna ama nakhluq ama na ama khalaqna right so you don't want to over here like you, you, uh, you know like they say well, what's that famous statement they say you know you don't use a uh, is it a, is it a hammer or something like don't use more force than is needed i forgot that statement it's, it's in my head yeah you guys know what it is you put in the comments here if you know what that statement is that famous statement where you shouldn't use more more force or more uh, than is needed Okay, mihad. For example, in the Quran, Allah mentions firashan. Yeah, bedding. Why didn't he mention that here? Because there's a reason why mihad fits in with the surah. Right? Uh, why doesn't he use the word bisatan? He's used bisat before, like a spread over here. Okay, so bisatan could have been used here. Um, okay, let's look at another one then. Ujibal, autadan. Yeah, he could have said, again, repeated the word naj'al, alam naj'al, naj'al, alam naj'al, ardu mihadan. Okay, he could have said, you know, awtadan. he could have said something like uh, rasiyat, like in another place in the Quran, he made the mountains rasiyat, like powerful, and, and anchors. He could have used the word anchors there, right? But he didn't. So, alam, question, yeah, he could have used another form of question as well. Now, uh, now let's try to look at how it fits in with the previous naba, is a great thing that's been used, yeah? Great piece of news that's coming. Mukhtalifun, they are differing. Mukhtalifun, again, this is something like powerful as well. These people are differing. What are they differing about? So all of this is something that you all agree to. Muttafiqun. In other words, right? You guys are arguing about whether the day of judgment is going to come. Yeah. You guys are arguing whether the Quran is true. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about those things we all agree upon. Let's talk about who created the earth. You believe the earth exists, yes? Yes. You believe that the earth has been made into like a cradle? Don't you think that there was thought that went into this? Don't you think someone consciously created the earth like this? Not randomly. Yeah. So you see how Allah does it? He moves, subhanAllah, He moves from something which is like, and instead of like arguing over that, Allah just switches to something which everyone can agree to. 
So he hasn't hasn't he made the earth? Hasn't we have made the earth like this? Yeah, we have, haven't we? Alam najal al haven't we made the earth and we had a bedding or a rather a cradle? Yeah. Well Jibala Autadan. So imagine there's a guy and this guy is like thinking of the earth in his mind now. His mind, that earth image that he has, is like thinking, this earth, okay, actually if you think about it now, if you with science and everything else, the cameras, you know, going out of space and you can see the earth, it just looks so beautiful, it just looks so nice, and it looks like something like a cradle for humanity. And the same with the mountains as well. Yeah, such powerful imagery the mountains create. Now if that bird's eye view of mountains actually does look like peg someone stuck something in the ground and there's part of it on top and part below like an iceberg. Okay, so uh, now I want you guys to think about this here. When you're pondering the surah, look at translation, or if you understand the Arabic, I want you to think about how the surah links itself all together, how intricate, how precise the wording is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used, and the devices in the language, the powerful devices that are used. Right, because this is what creates imagery in the Quran. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, yeah? Jazakallah khair for watching this with me all the way throughout. May Allah reward all of you guys, and I'm very sorry for making this too long, yeah? I try to make it as short as possible, but when I go on and on and on about these little points, they're not little points really, they're massive points, yeah, amazing things, and they bring us so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it makes the Quran more relevant to me, and I hope it makes it relevant to you guys as well. So if you enjoyed this, please give me a like, share it with your friends and family, and if you want me to make more videos like this, or any other way, tell me in the comments and help me on my Patreon. By you helping on Patreon, whatever you give, even if you give one dollar, doesn't really matter how much, but every single thing that you give, you give it means a lot to me. Right? It supports me, it uh, gives me motivation as well to make more videos as well and spare up my time and be able to uh, you know, uh, make these kind of videos and more other videos. I've got so many plans inshallah to make videos, hopefully. May Allah make it easy for me. Um, and so you can support me on the Patreon. Jazakallah khair guys, thank you to all my patrons, you guys know, uh, thank you very much, take care, remember in your du'as, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.